I'm Dr. John Scharfenberg from Loma Linda University, and I want to talk to you about calcium. And I've been interested in working with the Valmar group here because of their interest in cooking to show people how to get adequate nutrition. How are we going to get adequate amount of calcium, especially if you're a vegan? The studies over in Europe uh, showed that in the Epic Oxford group that they were getting maybe 37% more fractures in the vegan group than other groups. That's because of the lack of calcium. But if they got 525 milligrams of calcium a day, there was no increase in fracture risk. So we don't need a lot of calcium, but we need some. <clears throat> now, how much do we really need? In the US, the government here, through their Institute of Medicine, the Food and Nutrition Board, they say you need 1,000, 1,100, 1,200 milligrams a day. That's based primarily on balanced studies. Now, Dr. Mark Hegstead taught me well at Harvard University, one of the best teachers I've ever had in my life. And he pointed out that balanced study is no way to determine how much you need of any nutrient because you can get balance at any level. If you're getting too much, we would be a, just a hard cement block. If we weren't getting enough, our bones would break up and we'd be blown away. Neither is happening. A better way to tell how much you need is to go around the world, see how much the people are getting, and see if they're growing okay. And we don't need those great amounts that they're claiming we need. Uh, my Hegstead pointed out that in his prisoner study down in Peru, they got balanced at 700 milligrams a day. I was the one who set the amount that we would recommend our allies should have when I was with uh, the Secretary of the Interdepartmental Committee on Nutrition for National Defense. We recommended 400 milligrams a day. Well, now that was in the 1960s. Today, I might raise it to 525 based on the Epic Oxford study. So if you get no dairy products at all, how much calcium do you get in your diet? In Poland, they've done good studies, and the figure is pretty well accepted that you get about 250 milligrams of calcium a day if you don't use any dairy products. But how much would you get then if you took one cup of milk a day? You'd get another 300 milligrams, which would bring it up to 550 milligrams. But all these milk substitutes, they usually have calcium added. You'd get the same amount if you use almond milk that's been fortified with calcium or soy milk fortified with calcium. So from the fracture standpoint, it would just take a cup of a milk substitute fortified with calcium to give you that amount that we need from the fracture standpoint. What about the intestinal cancer standpoint? Well, intestinal cancer is a cancer of uh, industrialized nations. We don't understand why. Over in Africa, where they don't use much milk, they're getting no intestinal cancer. But in our country, where we use a lot of milk, we do have intestinal cancer. And the people who are getting milk actually are getting uh, less colon cancer than those who don't use any milk. So that's why they've been saying we need it to prevent colon cancer risk. Uh, but that doesn't really quite add up because in countries where they don't use milk, they don't have intestinal cancer. The other thing is hypertension. If you go on a low salt diet to lower your blood pressure, and it will lower it on the low salt diet, but if you add milk to it because of the calcium, it'll lower it even further. Now, if you take soy milk substitute that's been fortified with calcium, it does it even better yet. It lowers it nicely. So these are not good reasons for having that high level of recommended amounts of calcium. It's based primarily on balanced studies, and that's not the way to determine how much you need. Now, there's some problems with taking these supplements. For example, uh, millions of Americans are taking calcium supplements. There's some evidence that it may increase heart disease risk in women. So we don't think that's a good idea. And most all nutritionists say it's better to get your nutrients from food as far as possible rather than from supplements. 
Now, what about the men? Men who take calcium are apt to have an increased risk of prostate cancer. In fact, it, I would recommend that no man drink more than a cup of milk if he does use dairy products, no more than a cup of milk a day because of the increase in prostate cancer risk. Now, we know that some cancers are decreased if you take milk, use milk, because of the calcium. Uh, esophageal cancer is less. So there are some cancers where it is helpful. Well, with prostate cancer, the risk is increased with calcium. So we'd be very cautious to recommend men using calcium supplements. Uh, now, if you do need more calcium, how can you get more? First way is to cut your intake in salt in half. Then you won't excrete so much and you'll retain much more calcium. Uh, you won't lose so much through the kidneys. Okay? In fact, it would be the equivalent of 900 milligram tablet of calcium every day if you just cut your salt intake in half. The second way to get more calcium is make sure you have adequate vitamin D. Make sure your blood levels are okay. Uh, if you get adequate vitamin D, you will absorb two to three times more calcium. The third way is make sure you get foods where there's not a lot of phytic acid or oxalic acid, which will form insoluble salts with the calcium so that you can't absorb it. So <clears throat> if you take uh, foods such as uh, Chinese cabbage, bok choy, that's very good. That you can absorb the calcium very well. Uh, Okra is good, broccoli is good, kale is good, turnip greens, almonds are good with calcium. Now, I like uh, tofu, for example. I grew up in China. I like soybean curd, the, the tofu. And, and that has, it's usually set with calcium, not always. But if yours is set with calcium, it's a good way to get calcium. Now, over in Europe, I recommended that, but I found out it's so expensive over there that they didn't use a lot of it, they weren't getting much calcium through that source. But tofu set with calcium is a good way in this country to get adequate calcium intake. So even though calcium is a problem for total vegetarians, it can be handled fairly easily by getting adequate vitamin D, cutting your salt intake in half, and getting foods that don't have a lot of phytic acid or oxalic acid. Now, even though soybeans have a fair amount of oxalic acid, the uh, calcium is quite well absorbed. Uh, so that's not too bad in that situation. Now, over in Europe, they've been saying, well, over here, we use a lot of poppy seed, and it has calcium. Well, it does, but it's got a lot of fiber. It's got a lot of oxalic acid and phytic acid. So not much of that is really getting absorbed. So that's not a good source for them over there. So we need calcium. We don't need the high amounts that's being recommended by the Food and Nutrition Board today because it's based on the wrong premise on balanced studies primarily. We don't need uh, uh, to get that much calcium. But I think maybe 525 milligrams is adequate and one cup of a milk substitute would bring you up to that adequate amount. Hi everyone, my name is Marcy Hironis with Balmore Health. To see more videos with Dr. Schaffenberg, subscribe to my YouTube channel. We talk about a ton of fun stuff like healthy vegan food, product reviews, health and beauty tips, and I want you all to be a part of it. Let me know in the comment section if there's any other type of video that you would like to see. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. We'll see you in the next video.